Master Facebook Live session. So I just want to give a shout out to my wife, first of all, Carrie, for dressing me so well. And I just want to show off these uh, cufflinks that she got me uh, last year. I love to wear every day. Well, not all every day, but lots. Bob Ross. A bunch of other ones as well, though. But anyways, so today's um, question came to, from one of my past clients. Uh, essentially, he asked about what, what is an appraisal and what issues could an appraisal have. So, so that brought me back to something else, though. So um, the Toronto real estate market right now is pretty active. It's um, 2020, beginning of 2020, and we don't have a lot of inventory right now, and we have a lot of buyers. And because of that, though, a lot of the offers that are being submitted right now are coming in firm with no conditions. That means no financing condition, no home inspection condition. We talked about home inspections yesterday. So let's talk about the financing part of, of the offer. So one of the things is that if you're submitting an offer with no financing conditions, the banks have not really said yes to the offer yet. But if you're submitting a firm, that means you're agreeing to the terms of the offer with the seller. Assuming we're talking about from the buyer's point of view. So because of that though, the banks still have to do their appraisal. And when they do their appraisal, depending on where it comes in, if it comes in higher, lower than what you paid, then there could be some repercussions. So I have an example all set up ready for us. So assuming that we have a list price of 800,000. And let's say there was like a bunch of, um, there's a lot of offers and then it's sold for a million dollars. Since it's sold for a million dollars, it's, you know, it's above the list price. Well, list prices are arbitrary sometimes. So the next thing is, uh, let's say the comparables, most recent comparables in that area for those type of, let's say a semi three bedroom in East York, which uh, most of them are over this price already. But let's assume that uh, comparables for this these, this type of property are from 900,000 to 940,000. If it's in like an up market where there's a lot of activity, a lot of sales going on, you might be lucky and get an appraisal of 960. Might, or it might be 940, it all depends. You might have some features in your place that it's actually a little bit better that the appraiser might be able to, to appraise a little bit higher. So since you paid a million dollars and you appraise at 960, you're at a deficit of about 40,000. So what happens, what happens during these situations is the bank is gonna say, hey, you paid a million, place is only worth 960, you have to cover the difference first of all, before even your down payment. So you, you, you pay the 40,000 to cover the difference because the banks are not gonna cover that. So essentially that means that you paid 40,000 and, and since you purchased it for a million dollars, you need 20% down. So that means you need 200,000 plus to 40,000 to close on this property. Because otherwise, let's assume that it did appraise properly Let's say it pays a million dollars and you paid a million, you only have to put $200,000 down. So this is like a very uh, extreme situation. It does happen from time to time, especially now with the crazy bids that are happening in the Toronto uh, market right now. But uh, having said that, that's, that's essentially how the appraisal works and what you should be aware of. So when I coach my clients in terms of multiple offers, we always talk about worst case scenarios. Like when we look at the comparables and how recent the comparables were. Were they within 30 days, 90 days, like 120 days? Because sometimes when they're a little bit older, prices have gone up since since those those, those other homes have sold. And because of that, though, um, you can actually uh, have an increase in the in the values of the appraisals, in the comparables. That is, so it all it's a case by case scenario. Every property is different. Every offer situation is different. So consult your realtor. Make sure you talk about worst case scenarios because just in case it's worst case scenarios, you have to make sure you have enough cash to deal with these worst case scenarios. Okay, thanks again for watching. I'm gonna be back tomorrow with, your, with my next question. If you have a question that I haven't answered yet, please message me and I'll answer it in a future episode. Bye for now.